So in this video, we're going to talk about another simple machine. And this time, that simple machine is the wedge. And wedges are a type of simple machine that divert the force that's applied to their blunt end into forces that push outward along its sloped surface. And wedges are actually a type of inclined plane with a narrow edge that tapers to a thicker blunt end and with two sloped surfaces that meet at an acute angle. So we can visualize this with the help of this illustration here. We have our wedge in the middle. We have the applied force to the blunt end. And then we have the force that comes as a result of that force being applied to the blunt end, which is this output force from the sloped surfaces. Now, another key thing to mention about the wedge is this tip. This is often called the cutting edge, the penetration edge, or simply just the tip edge. And it's here that concentrates force over a small area, creating a significantly higher pressure at the point of contact. So for example, in the illustration we're looking at here, this is as if a wedge has been forced through, for example, a piece of wood. So in order to initially enter the wood, the wedge concentrates a lot of force at the tip in order to penetrate the wood. Then when further force is applied, that force will go outward to split the wood and travel further downwards. By now you've probably come to expect that if we're talking about simple machines, we're going to focus on the mechanical advantage because this is why we're interested in simple machines. They afford a mechanical advantage that reduce effort. They make things easier. So for a wedge, the mechanical advantage is given by the length divided by the width, where the length is considered the distance from the blunt face to the penetrating edge, and the width is essentially the size of the blunt face. So if we were to increase the length or decrease the width, we will be increasing the mechanical advantage. And the opposite is also true. If we were to decrease the length or instead increase the width, then we're going to decrease the mechanical advantage. But another way to think about this is the smaller the angle, the higher the mechanical advantage. So let's think about that for a moment. First of all, by the smaller angle, they're talking about this acute angle here towards the penetrating edge. Because if we were to increase the length, so in by doing so, increase the mechanical advantage, or increase the mechanical advantage by decreasing the width, well then this angle actually gets smaller. So you can think about it in either term, but we recommend keeping the mechanical advantage formula on hand and in mind. Now, as an inclined plane, where is this mechanical advantage affecting, effectively coming from? Well, it's essentially the same as we saw in the inclined planes and in the screws, which again, were just a modified type of inclined plane. Force is being distributed over a longer length, and this is why effort is reduced. So there are many different applications of a wedge, and we can talk about three of them. And that will be cutting, splitting, and stopping motion. So in splitting, for example, in splitting a piece of wood, a wedge is used in its most traditional sense. We have the cutting or penetrating edge, which has a very high pressure, and it's used to actually penetrate into the surface of the material. A separate tool, for example, in this case a hammer, is used to apply force to the blunt end of the wedge. Again, we get that high pressure at the cutting edge, which allows for penetration, and then additional force is transferred to the side surfaces. So the cutting edge helps go into the surface, down, and the force that's redistributed to the sides helps actually split the object. Now we have a similar application, and that's cutting. But the main difference is, instead of having a tool that applies force to the blunt end of a wedge, in cutting, the tool itself can be considered the wedge. And one example is that of a knife. So the blade of the knife, the cutting blade, the cutting edge, can be considered as a wedge. We effectively have two inclined planes coming together, and again, we have this high pressure at the tip, at the cutting tip, which allows us to cut through an object, to penetrate an object. And then lastly, we have a little bit of a different example to what we've talked about before, which is that of stopping motion, and an obvious example being a door stop. Now again, this is different to what we've looked at so far, because we're not splitting, cutting, fracturing, breaking, 
we're actually just using it to stop motion. And that's because a wedge, as its name suggests, can wedge between two surfaces or two structures, such as the floor and a door. So, for example, if the door were to try to swing open, well then the weight of the door will come into contact with the sloped face of the wedge, and the friction from the surface of the wedge and the ground help resist motion, and it's very effective at doing so. Let's review some of the most important information we learned about wedges. First of all, wedges are simple machines that divert force applied to its blunt end into forces that push outward along its sloped surfaces. And wedges are actually a type of inclined plane with a narrow edge tapering to a thicker blunt end and with two sloped surfaces that meet at an acute angle. And the edge where that acute angle is formed is called the cutting edge, the penetration edge, or simply the tip edge. And at this tip edge, force concentrates over a small area, creating significantly higher pressure at the point of contact. And then the mechanical advantage for a wedge is given by the length divided by the width.